we're joined by Jim Cassetta and Rob Corley, the CEOs of Work Inc. and Neighborhood Housing Solutions, to talk a bit about both of those organizations and also about a special project that's going on right here in Quincy in Germantown. So, uh, Jim, Rob, good to see you both uh, virtually. Thanks for spending some time with us. Same here. Great to see you, Joe. I'll, I'll be it virtually. Hopefully we can do in person um, soon, but in the meantime, this will have to uh, suffice. So, uh, Jim, I thought if we could maybe start with you and talk to us a little bit about um, about Work Inc. Certainly folks in, in Quincy would be very familiar with it. You were in uh, North Quincy for some 30 years before yep. you, you moved. But uh, for folks who might not know, what is Work Inc.? Oh, well, you know, it's interesting because Quincy is still our home. Um, like you said, we were sort of born in Quincy. Um, we were at the old nuke, nuke plant way out in the island in the beginning. Then we moved to 3 Arlington Street, which, as as your viewers may know, is now a hotel. Um, but we were there over 30 years. And Work Inc. is um, sort of a unique organization. We, um, we support over 1,200 individuals with disabilities throughout the whole state. And embedded in our name is work. We feel very strongly that an individual with a disability needs um, a roof over their head, which we're going to be talking about today, right. but also needs a place and, and destination every day, just like the three of us. Um, and that's what working was created. I call it the three-legged stool way back when. You need a roof over your head. You need good treatment, you know, psychopharmacology, medication, talk therapy. And then the third leg of the stool is where working comes in. You need a job. Mm -hmm. And as, as, as your viewers may know, they see a lot of working all over metropolitan Boston. We have employees at the stop and shop where we used to be located. Um, we're the largest employer of individuals with disabilities in New England. Wow. We, and in downtown Boston alone, we have 130 folks with disabilities maintaining all the federal buildings. The John F. Kennedy Library, the Moakley Courthouse, the Tip O'Neill Building, and um, those folks, the, the 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 real benefit is for them. They have a place to go. They feel great, and you know, the benefit is to us as taxpayers, because if folks like that weren't working, they would be on entitlements, and entitlements is what we pay us that. A good portion of our taxes go to Medicaid, uh, Mass Health, so those folks get off benefits and pay taxes just like the rest of us. But first and foremost is a roof over their head, and that's you can't do anything without a home. Yeah. And uh, thanks to our friends at NeighborWorks, and we we lease Morton Street from from them, and we we work with people who are deaf, uh, developmentally disabled physical challenges. And one of the working's goals is to create that quote, three-legged stool. And the first one is the roof over your head because you can't, you can't really do a plan for a person's life without having them a place to call home. Sure. And we're proud of Quincy. We, um, as I said, we were born in Quincy. We have seven group homes in Quincy. Hmm. We, we support a lot of families from Quincy because we have a family support program. Uh, with folks who have disabilities that are still living at home, who have their challenges. We're always sending our family support staff to assist them. And I'll tell you, the last four months has been challenging to say the least. You know, we're trying to do things like this. As I was saying to Joe earlier, I didn't know what Zoom meant three months ago. <laughs> now I'm on at least two or three Zoom meetings a day. Wow. So um, Work Inc. is, 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 is like I said, Quincy is our home. Dorchester is sort of our our temporary home, but Quincy has always been always been our home. So sure. thank you. Sure. And um, Rob, uh, for for NeighborWorks Housing Solutions, uh, you've gone through a bit of a, a, a change over the past several years, just in, in name, but certainly not in mission, right? No, not at all, Joe. Uh, again, Quincy is uh, is our home as well, where we were uh, we started in West Quincy, geez, over 30, 35 years ago. Wow. Um, and uh, again, started in just one neighborhood, and we've actually expanded our services 
basically throughout the region, but our headquarters is still here in Quincy behind me. I'm not actually standing on the front lawn, but it is behind me on Washington Street. Um, Frozen Freddy's is open across the street, though. So, um, uh, 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 although the signs out front, you got to be careful, but you can still get excellent ice cream there. Um, but we've as uh, been on uh, your program many times before, and thank you for all you d you have been doing during this time, uh, this challenging time. Um, but our organization, you know, NeighborWorks Housing Solutions is is the the current name, and we get made fun of because our name has changed a little bit over the years. Right. But the mission hasn't at all, um, and it is about housing solutions. And our real estate development is something that we've been doing quite for quite a while now, for over 20 years. Uh, I've been with the organization for about 22 years, mm -hmm. and um, and real estate development has been our a major focus uh, during that period of time. And that all began with working with organizations like Work Inc. Um, that are providing amazing services and just incredible the incredible work that they do on behalf of the people they serve. And they were looking to develop property uh, or find properties to develop and a partner uh, and to partner with someone that could bring that expertise. Um, and that's where our, where our role fits in here is being able to, to target property, uh, to develop it. Uh, get it funded um, and and make it happen and so it really takes this partnership to uh, make something like that happen it makes a strong project a strong application and then and then success into the future for the residents that are going to live there um, but the other key to the success that we've had I think both our organizations has been the city of Quincy mm -hmm. um, and the money and the support uh, from the city and that starts with the mayor and it starts with the planning director um, and the planning department. They have special funding, uh, a lot of it being federal, uh, that they can put aside uh, to support a development like this. To develop something like this, a small-scale project uh, in a neighborhood, that's how we want it to be. That's how, that's how Work Inc. wants this to look. It's supposed to feel that way. It's not supposed to be institutional. This is supposed to fit into the fabric of a neighborhood. Uh, and then from the neighborhood's perspective, that's also encouraged and welcomed. Um, but to fund those things, it's expensive. Um, you know, you don't have the scale that you typically would like to see in a large development uh, with multiple, multiple units because the cost of construction and everything else that we hear in every zoning meeting that we've had before all this all started um, is that you need the units to cover the cost. So the city has really stepped up and said, hey, this type of housing is really important and something that we want to have as a model in our city. Uh, to, to show other municipalities that this type of housing, if every municipality had a home like this, then Jim's job would be that much easier. Mm -hmm. um, and so, again, Quincy is leading the way here on, uh, on setting the standard for the type of housing uh, that this is. And I think, Jim, if I, I may be overstating, but we went through a process of looking at other homes mm -hmm. that Jim has developed in other areas and other municipalities, great prop properties, great projects, trying to take the best of everything that uh, has been learned, working directly even with staff that are in these properties um, and working there to say, hey, you know, this would have been better if this was there, right? It's always that thing after you finish remodeling your kitchen, it's, geez, I should have put the, you know, the, ca uh, the pantry in this location. So anyways, we think this property in Germantown uh, is is one of the best in the state, if not the best, oh. for its uh, size and shape. I totally agree. And I, as as Rob said, we we have um, 23 group homes scattered throughout the Commonwealth, and I think you visited several of them, Rob, with our staff. And I think you did pick the best out of each because we all have good hindsight in anything we do. But now that we were you were able to physically go into I'm thinking about Walcott, Walcott Street and Walcott Road in Milton. Yes. Um, I think Germantown is sort of looks like that when I walked through it a couple of times that I did. But I think you did take the best of the um, best of the homes we've developed. And this particular home, as folks may, may or may not know, we're going to be supporting five individuals who are deaf and hard of hearing and, and also developmentally disabled, one of which is we're very, very proud of. This particular person, I think, I think it's a female, I'm not positive, but has spent the last 17 years living in an institution. Wow. And she is so looking forward to coming home or going home because unfortunately she hasn't had a home 
uh, to go to. And the next step will be get them set, get them stabilized, get them settled in. And some of them may or may not be working, but that's my next step. Get them settled in and then, okay, let's get them to work. Just like what working tries to do with everyone we support. That, that first leg you talked about, right, Jim? Exactly. That roof over your head, yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Have a, we have a phenomenal staff. So the second leg is embedded. We have uh, psych, uh, social workers, behavioral therapists, mm -hmm. interpreters, and you know, supporting a home with individuals who are deaf and hard of hearing is a very unique challenge for mm -hmm. us to recruit staff who literally are there 24 seven. And um, I flunked sign language at working. I've got to take the course again. <laughs> but but it's a, when I go to a meeting with, with my deaf, our deaf staff, yeah. the interpreters are valuable to us. And, and thank God they themselves can talk to each other. And the individuals we support can talk to them via sign language too. Yeah. I want to pick up on something Rob mentioned too. I think it's so important is that these folks will have a home. It's not an institution. You know, they're part of a, the fabric of, of that neighborhood. How, how important is that? Critical, critical. Because, you know, we have about, well, pre-COVID, we had 300 folks a day coming into working. And, you know, I, I've, I've gotten to know many of them, most of them, and they, believe it or not, have the same uh, goals, aspirations as the three of us. They want to work. Mm -hmm. they're, they're loyal Red Sox fans, Celtics <laughs> fans, Patriots fans. I don't talk to them about what their, what their challenges are. We talk just like if I met you at a bar and had a beer, we would have the same type of conversations. So for them to be institutionalized, like many of our folks who are, let's see, probably close to 60 years old now, mm -hmm. they started their lives, unfortunately, in institutions because mm -hmm. deinstitutionalization only hit during our lifetimes, only hit in the late 60s, early 70s. And Work Inc. was born in the mid 50s, so we really were part of that whole movement. Um, folks coming, now today, it's interesting, today, folks that are turning 22, that's the, that's the phrase that um, when you turn 22, the state has responsibility for supporting folks with disabilities, mm -hmm. because up until 22, the local educational authorities, the school systems support them. So we have a turning 22 cadre of individuals, believe it or not, that we're still looking for homes for mm. and trying to get them into work and to get them into supportive services. So Rob, I'm sure we'll be talking about future developments too down the road. And um, the state's been very supportive for that population because it costs a lot less to support an individual with a disability in the community than it would in an institution. Mm -hmm. And, that's, uh, and that's, that's a great way. And this is a great state to live in if you have challenges like that. Yeah, the same mindset is being put toward older folks, you know, senior citizens, trying to keep them in their homes as much as possible. Right. Um, Aging as in place, that's exactly. correct. Exactly, yeah. Rob, can you tell us a little bit about the history of this particular property in Germantown? Um, you know, where it is, how you acquired it, what, what, uh, what it was, what it will be. Yeah. Yeah. So um, uh, this property, um, it, we're always looking at different uh, potential development sites uh, in Quincy. Um, we often get what others maybe don't want. Um, so that sometimes becomes our, our opportunity. Um, this particular property, though, uh, uh, came about, it, it was a, a property that was on the market. It, it was a single family home. Uh, that had an extremely large rear lot uh, or very, very large lot. Um, so there was some development opportunity in the rear of the property. Um, and oh, there I'm is. sorry, uh, did I lose you guys? Nope. nope. You're just showing folks what the house looks like. Uh, Oh, okay. Sorry. You, 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 uh, I apologize. <laughs> I thought I lost you for a second. Uh, so this rear lot uh, of the property was quite large. Uh, this is uh, this photo is from a, a couple of months back. Um, but this now is actually facing, the, the picture you see here on the screen is uh, facing the rear of the property, which happens to abut up to 
the housing authority's property, oh. uh, one of their larger developments in, in Germantown. So although it's on the rear of the building, uh, the real lot, it actually front faces uh, from your perspective uh, of the parking lot and area from behind um, uh, Bicknell Street where the uh, Germantown property, uh, I'm sorry, the housing authority property is. So uh, it seemed like a unique, a unique opportunity to develop. Um, we could have, like some other you know, developments, you could have put a lot more units there potentially. Um, it did have the, you know, the size to even be something bigger like townhouses or something like that. But we thought it was a, a perfect site for, for a, a home like this uh, that, that Jim has uh, gone into detail dis describing. Jim also mentioned that we had done a, a, a property on Morton Street in uh, Quincy many years ago, maybe uh, 15, 16 years ago. Again, a new construction property uh, uh, for uh, devel developmentally disabled individuals uh, and those that are primarily in wheelchairs. Um, so we built that one new and uh, this just seemed like the perfect opportunity to put a property uh, uh, or build a home like this on a property this size. And it, it's as you can see, lower scale. Uh, it's not uh, over dominating the neighborhood or any of the abutters. Uh, it fits right into the to the neighborhood in general, um, and we think it's a, actually an improvement. Um, we the lot back here at one point I think had a pool in it, uh, so there was no trees or anything uh, that we, not too many things that we had to take out. Um, so it, it just seemed to fit perfect. Um, and that's when we reached out to Work Inc. and said, hey, we think we might have a site uh, that fits your needs. And we had been talking, you know, off and on as we do. And um, the rest went from there. We did keep the original single family home uh, out in the front that's on, on Bicknell Street. So that property remained. And this one was added to the rear. And we subdivided the two lots. Um, okay. So that's, that's how we ended up with this. And, you know, what are the special challenges to, to create a property for folks who are deaf? Well, yes, I, I'll, 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 I'll let Jim, I'll, I'll, I'll start with that. So um, what's unique about it, what I found interesting anyways, was looking at the, at the sight lines, um, uh, sort of the open floor plan and design uh, that, again, we looked at in other properties um, and had our architects look at, Elton Hampton Architects or our architects. Um, and it is a unique design um, and definitely uh, not what you would normally do or you're, you're accustomed to in, in developing a home like this. Um, but uh, including things like, you know, bed shakers and, and different types of things that are required uh, in each of the units. And one of the, and I'll, and I'll, uh, I'll just leave with this point. One of the most interesting thing was each room, each, each bedroom has to have an exit door to the exterior oh. directly. Okay. So uh, the building is surrounded with basically a, a, a large walkway area. So each individual dwelling unit or bedroom unit, the bed can be literally moved out right onto the walkway from an emergency sort of egress door out of the room. Okay. So you have your regular front door, rear door, side door, but each individual room has an emergency exit door um, that again looks like a regular door. It doesn't look like an institutional door with a big panic bar and a giant exit sign above it. Right. But uh, but there is a, a again in case God forbid there was everything that ever happened, they could be immediately moved out of the bedroom without having to get into something else. Like the bed could literally be rolled right out if necessary. Yep. So yep. that was very unique feature. Yeah, and as Rob said. Uh, Rob, I'm proud of you. You really got the deaf community description very well because, you know, if, if at two in the morning we have to have an evacuation, which which we do, we we have we're mandated by the state to actually have drills, oh. unannounced drills. Um, I don't know how many times a year. Mm -hmm. My colleague Rohan, who runs the division, can uh, can elaborate on that. But folks have to be outside of their residence within three and a half minutes okay um that by regulation and we have unannounced drills when those beds shake at two in the morning the staff knows that those folks have to be outside and having an exit out of each bedroom is phenomenally efficient mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. we don't we not all of our homes have that luxury at working 
Some of our homes are pretty old, but and then we have to wake folks up, get them out, but we always have to make sure it's three and a half minutes. And, um, and the state regulates it and makes sure we hear, I think we have to have drills at least three times a year. Okay. Okay. What about, you know, kind of like everyday living, Jim, in terms of uh, using the telephone or watching television or, or um, you know, doing laundry or stuff like that? Are there special considerations? For, for... Well, yes and no. Okay. Um, you have on a TV, you have the um, words. I, there's a term for it. Yeah, Closed captioning. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Yep. Closed captioning. Uh, you have the individuals and the staff all have sign language. Okay. Um, food, it's it's a very quiet environment when you're having yeah, dinner, yeah. but but they're all talking. They're all yeah. talking. We it's as normal as the homes we three live in. Yeah. With the exception of some special attributes to compensate for the uh, uh, for the lack of the ability to hear. Um, sure. Other than that, everything is, is as normal as any other home. So who are these folks that will be, uh, you know, moving in, into Quincy? I mean, obviously not not names, but, uh, you know, where, where well, are they? Um, I'm gonna, I, know, I know of one that I shared with, because that, that touched my heart. Yes. Um, I don't know exactly story. where the other four. Uh, what happens in, is in the Commonwealth, it's a closed referral system. I see. Uh, the Department of Developmental Services reimburses working for the supportive costs okay. um, of the home, staffing, um, special special requirements, et cetera. So um, my colleague who runs my residential, our residential division is probably screening folks, or they've all been screened already. Okay. They, can be, they can be referred from a, a residential school program in turning 22, oh, wow. the Horace Mann, Horace Mann School. There are several schools in the Commonwealth that support individuals who are deaf. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly what institution the young lady who spent the last 17 years was in, but DDS still has um, Rentham and Hogan. There are two, mm -hmm. there are still two institutions that are not accepting admissions, mm -hmm. but they still have over 350 folks with developmental disabilities living in the institutions are waiting for funds to get them um, outplaced. Yeah. And then you have folks with disabilities living in, in their homes. Yep. And, and, and if their parents are getting older, if they're in their 40s and 50s, the parents are probably going to be in their 60s, 70s, or 80s. They are going to need a place to eventually move to. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and and, and um, the original home that we created on Morton Street, uh, to that point, um, was uh, for the for the late Mildred and Bob Foy, uh, their daughter right. uh, Susie. Yep. Um, again, many parents. Uh, a, again, not only uh, for for folks who are deaf, but also deaf and have physical disabilities. Um, uh, to manage uh, uh, an over twenty year old, someone that that ages out, and to try to uh, manage them at home becomes a real challenge, especially as they get older. So having a facility like this, that is um, also uh, the the accessibility here is is amazing. Really, it's state of the art. Um, uh, a home like this is just so important. Yeah, so uh, to have an option like this, and um, to see the difference on what we thought and still is a wonderful place on Morton Street, um, but even the change in the technology and right. what's offered in a property now. I mean, that was new construction then, about 18 right. years ago. To now. It's it's amazing what can be offered, um, yeah. and including you know options for outdoor space, screened-in space, um, and uh, just for family visiting, coming in like uh, areas uh, for them uh, to to meet and greet and and be part of this household. Like 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 was said, just like us when we have guests over or people come over, uh, just to feel like you're in a home, yeah, uh, and not in like a waiting room of a doctor's office I, feel, yeah. Did you have to, Rob, did you have to find um, a specialized construction company to, to com complete this project? Um, uh, no, we, we did have a, a company that uh, that specializes more in small residential type construction. So okay. this, uh, interesting you mentioned that, Joe. McLeod is our contractor. I, I'd be uh, remiss if I didn't mention them. They've done an amazing job. Um, but the, 
but it is challenging work, right? It's things that they that that are not necessarily what they would normally uh, do or how they do things. So again, the design was key. The input up front was key, um, and we've had a a, a great team here uh, that, to develop it. And uh, Tim Doherty, our real estate development director, and Dave Lovering, our construction manager, uh, again keeping a close eye on making sure this is the way that Work Inc. wants it. Because, right. geez, you don't want to get it wrong with them, Joe, right? You're, 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 you're going to have a punchless nightmare, right? <laughs> it's been a great yeah. partnership, absolutely. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's you know, it's it's life-changing, obviously, for that young lady, um, uh, but certainly for her, her family um, right. as well, you know. Uh, it must be a very a proud and very emotional moment, I'm sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, family's the key. You know, we, we have a family support program that, that – helps families wade through the, the bureaucracy of entitlement applications, you know, services, service coordinators. And we, we sort of are the anchor behind all that. And, yeah. um, and like you said, Joe, the quality of life is amazing. And we all take it for granted, those of us who live in our homes and don't have our own challenges. But these folks, this is a brand new life for them. You're absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. Rob, what is the um, uh, total cost for the project and what's the timeline? Ooh, the timeline's always tricky, right? So, um, yeah, we're we're hoping for uh, the end of the month here. So we're very, very close. Um, again, uh, with any construction project, it's always uh, wait a week, wait a week, and another week. Um, but, uh, you know, considering all that we've been through in the last four months, um, this has been a very challenging time, obviously, yeah. but uh, thankfully uh, we were able to maintain our construction schedule for the most part um, and uh, worked through the, this time. Um, uh, it, it, the, the phasing of the construction worked well that way and that we could be outside and work and doing exterior work, um, so that, that worked out quite well. And so we hope to be done by the end of the month here. Um, and, and start occupying. Originally, I think we were, we were shooting for June, mm -hmm. uh, so we did lose some time, but we, we can't fully blame that on uh, the, the health crisis. Uh, that's just regular construction sure. stuff. Um, but uh, So we're hoping for uh, the 1st of August. This is um, about a $1.5 million project all in. Um, uh, it, again, it's, it seemed, that may seem expensive. Uh, it is. Um, but this is something that's like the property we did even 18 years ago. That's here to here to stay, right. built to last, uh, and just a, a, a unique property, uh, a beautiful building, by the way, beautifully designed building that I think really fits into the neighborhood, um, and something that we can all be proud of here in the city. Yeah, and Jim, will there be kind of a like? A move-in day celebration. I mean, obviously, in the pandemic, you can't have you know strippers yeah, we, and, and ice cream trucks. But uh, I, I think I think Bob, correct, correct me if I'm wrong. I think we have a tentative virtual grand opening coming up in probably mid to late July. I know mm -hmm. Rohan has been trying to get something on our schedule to do a virtual grand opening. But when and if the pandemic subsides, we would like to invite. Usually we have an open house. I know, yeah. In, invite the neighbors, not not because we have individuals with disabilities, but because when you move into a neighborhood, you want to meet your neighbors. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what we, years ago, when I started in the business over 45 years ago, that was a different atmosphere. It was, it was the NIMBY stuff, not in my backyard. Thank goodness for the most part, not all, but for the most part, those days have gone in my rear view mirror. But once in a while, when Work Inc. is trying to establish something somewhere, we'll get the NIMBY attitude. And then I'll go out and meet with the neighbors myself. And I'll say, by the way, I have a disabled son. And it sort of breaks the ice. And we talk. Mm. And we become great neighbors over the years. Yeah, yeah. And this will be uh, staffed 24-7, right? 24-7, correct. Correct. Yes. And, you yes. Know, not, 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 to, not to make light of who the clients are, who the residents are. But you won't hear a peep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's gonna be a, <laughs> it's gonna be sort of a quiet house, yeah. other than the strobe lights, right? We'll have once in a while the strobe yeah. lights go off. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, we've had that problem before, yeah. uh, or the or the van backing up, or those kind of things. But yeah, we made exactly. it so that that won't happen. You know, exactly. so these are the little things that we learned along the way. Exactly. But yes, there will be a, a an open house. Um, 
uh, we, you know, we've reached out to the mayor's office, and the mayor would like to come out in person, of course, and, right. and view the property, and that's mm -hmm. something that we can certainly do now. So it's going to be, I think, somewhat of a hybrid, Joe, where we might do some uh, in-person uh, pieces uh, mm -hmm. as well as some uh, video, Zoom video type uh, things like this because, yeah. again, the other big funder here is the state of Massachusetts, right. um, uh, the Department of Housing and Community Development. They have special funds for this this one in a competition so we had to compete for these this funding and that's what the key is here having the local support having a city like this behind us um, our partnership as two organizations that have been doing this work for a long time and doing it well trusted organizations uh, that's the winning combination that got this funding here to to build this wonderful facility in the absolutely. city absolutely so we hope to follow it uh, along here at Quincy Access Television as, as well uh, to show the, the, the community uh, what it is, what it looks like, and how it will benefit um, the city. So we look forward to that. Anything else, uh, gentlemen, you'd like to add? Just a shout out to thank Neighbor Works for the incredible partnership. Um, Rob, I'm usually the project manager on when working self funds our own constructions. Thank God you took that off my plate this year. It was awesome. <laughs> awesome. I uh, you're, you're yeah, you're welcome, Jim. I, this is the year that I, I, I would have liked to have shared that responsibility, but yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, very much. No, uh, again, it's a pleasure working with Work Inc., and uh, it has been a longstanding friendship and partnership over right. the years, and, and we're looking to do much, much more. Right. So right. thank you, Joe. Oh, Thanks, Joe. Pleasure. You're very welcome. If folks would like to learn more about Work Inc. or uh, NeighborWorks, uh, how, do they, how do they do that? Um, www.workinc.org or call me directly, 617-691-1502. Uh, for us, it's uh, NeighborWorks uh, Housing Solutions. So it's NHS, www.nhsmass.org NHS, -S -S uh, and find out about all we do. Great. Great. Gentlemen, thank you both again and stay safe. Thank you. You too. Thank Take you care. too, Joe. Thanks thank so you. Much. Bye-bye.